One of the things that's polarized the immigration debate is that we're having two debates. If you look at people who are in favor of immigration, they talk about the benefits. They talk about how 40% of our Fortune 500 companies are started by immigrants or their children. They talk about the diversity of skills that it brings to our workforce or entrepreneurship and all the new businesses that start for immigrants. The people who oppose immigrants talk not about the benefits, just about the costs. The fact that yes, if you use an emergency room, that costs money. When you go to a school, that costs money. And what ends up happening is that you have two conversations talking past each other. Yes, immigrants have costs and yes, they have benefits, but unless you're measuring both, you're never gonna know. But the reality is when you do measure both, immigration is a huge boon to America. It's one of our great competitive advantages. People who want to have a better life vote with their feet and they come here. Change is hard. If you can avoid change, most people will. And so it's easy to believe the worst about these newcomers, that they're the ones taking the money, they're the ones taking the job, that's why things aren't the way they used to be. The reality, however, has always been that we need to have the strong influx of immigrants to acquire greater economic strength and to, to reach our national goals. The immigration system shouldn't decide our future, but the immigration system should help us achieve that future. So the first goal, I think, is always to decide where do we want to go as a country? What kind of a labor force do we want to have? What kind of immigration do we want and need? And then you build an immigration system to achieve that goal. It's been about 20 years that we've really been pushing for a massive change of our immigration laws. One of the biggest problems is dealing with the undocumented who are currently here, people who have overstayed or have entered illegally who are embedded in our, our workforce. If we are to have a legalization for the 11 million people, which is really the right thing to do and the majority of the American people support that, we don't want to recreate it again. So how don't we recreate it again? We analyze what happened last time. We legalized three million people. It was a Band-Aid, but what about future needs? What about a construction boom and not enough construction workers? What about an agricultural boom? If we couple a legalization program with a reasonable worker program for these people for whom there was a job waiting where there weren't available U.S. workers, we wouldn't recreate the problem of so many undocumented people. And the question is, how do you make the case to the American public that the undocumented immigrant population deserves our empathy? Why should they be able to legalize our status? You know, there are criteria to put into place that can show that an immigrant is serving and protecting American values, helping America be safer, and helping us as a country prosper. The undocumented immigrant population should be required to register for legal status. In that registration for legal status, they are passing a criminal background check. So if they've committed a violent crime, they don't belong here, full stop. They should show that they are learning English, in essence, becoming a part of American society. They should show that they are paying their taxes. They call it earned legalization because people have to earn the right to stay here by working, contributing, and not committing crimes. And that whatever program is, it isn't open-ended enough to attract a lot more undocumented immigrants to try to get in. We're gonna need a change to the underlying system. We're gonna have to figure out how to have an efficient system that provides pathways and opportunity for people to come in, live within the law, and have a legal status while they're here. And that it's flexible, that they understand some of them are temporary, some of them could be seasonal, some of them are just employment-based, some of them will be family-based. We need a program for workers. You must have a program like we have H-1Bs for high-skilled workers. If we had a program, we would not be in this problem. So we desperately need to have fixed legal immigration that match the needs of our businesses and that match the needs of our economy. It's got to be predictable in that the rules have to be understood and they have to be clear. And they've got to be rules that people can legitimately follow. 
Family members have to be able to understand how do I petition for a family member. And employers need to know that they can turn to immigration to fill legitimate demands in our labor force. One of the features of our immigration system that differs from some of the other countries we're often compared to, like Canada, Australia, UK, is that our immigration system is set via statute. It's set in law. Congress establishes the categories, the numbers, the selection criteria, the rules. We have to find some way that allows us to calibrate our immigration based on our economy and the country and frankly the politics of the issue at that period of time. It may change, it may differ, but if we want the public to accept how we manage our immigration system, we need to talk more about it on a more regular basis, not fight about it so often. More and more when you go locally and you go into communities, you find that people support immigrants. And you're seeing more members of Congress be able to talk about an issue that simply they couldn't talk about before. And so yes, this is a hard issue and sometimes it's harder than it's ever been. But as a country, though it might not seem so at the 30,000 foot and national media level, we are very much moving in a different direction. We're having that debate. And the fact is, is that more folks from across the political spectrum are looking for an approach that serves their interests, that is within their cultural framework, and that ultimately helps the immigrant that they have come to know and love become an American. What we want is both parties to put skin in the game and actually drive to some sort of solution. At the same time, we need communities to come alongside that. We want them to be ready for whatever changes come in the immigration system, and a lot of that is education. We've got to invest in those local communities to say, hey, here's some resources to help you understand how both communities can learn and grow together. That kind of mutual understanding is the heart of integration. And so to the extent that we can humanize this conversation and deal with people as people, rather than people as statistics and threats, we're gonna solve the problem. But it's not easy. And the responsibility falls on the public. It falls on the media to explain the nuances and not just the hot stories that are capturing people's attention. It falls on readers to really understand the issue to the best of their ability. No, they don't need to become immigration experts, each and every one of them, but they should understand the basics of both sides. Politicians should be held accountable to what they say they want to do with immigration. They should have legitimate policies. It should not be a popularity contest. These are all big issues that we see in our society, but they infect issues like immigration. I think it's important for the American public to know that the goal is having an immigration system that's sensible and good for America, that is enforceable and that is regulated, and that allows us all to grow together. When you look at what people think about what is the solution, can we take people who are here, who have been here for years, and give them a path to legal status if they can pass a background check, learn English, pay back taxes, go to the end of the line? Can we modernize our immigration system so that we're bringing in the workers we need to make our economy dynamic while ensuring we're protecting American workers? And can we take control of our border and our employment system to make sure people are hiring legally? That is overwhelming support among both parties and both houses of Congress. And that means that this exhausted majority, this rational middle of the country that is looking for a solution, they have to find the ways, create the ways where their voices are heard. There is a groundswell for a different approach on immigration, and now is the moment where we have to make that choice. We know what divides us, skin color, point of origin, perhaps a second language that we speak, but it's a lot more difficult to say what is going to unite this country. Both political parties are playing identity politics. So we have to begin to kind of create those values now. I remain optimistic. I mean, this is America. The idea that we welcome those yearning to breathe free is on our Statue of Liberty, right? This is, this is core fabric of who we are. Immigrants have been part of our communities since the very beginning, and Americans know this. We are ready for folks to work together rather than divide. And if we can bring folks together to talk about such a human issue like immigration, I think we're going to hit a home run.
Thank you.